the court. And I am fortunate enough to be here. I am Debbie uh, with the wonderful and lovely Neka Hall. Neka is the mother of four, two sunshines, age 21 and 16, an angel baby who would be 11, and a rainbow who is seven. She is a whole woman advocate who provides in person and virtual support to women through any life phase. She is a pregnancy and infant loss awareness advocate with a primary focus on infant and maternal mortality within the African-American community. In 2014, she founded Quietly United in Laws Together, Quilt Campaign, which is pregnancy and infant loss awareness campaign designed to raise awareness of all types of loss from, from conception through a child's first two years of life, teach healthy fertility through womb health education, provide support to families who suffer these losses and provide support for memory programs so they won't close due to inability to afford supplies. Following the stillbirth of her daughter in August, 2010, NECA sought out ways to aid others in having a positive birth outcome. She stumbled across the doula profession and needed to learn more. She is now a full spectrum doula. And in June 2016, NECA had the pleasure of being selected due to her work in the pregnancy and infant loss community to participate in the U.S. of Women's Summit as a nominated change maker, which was hosted by former First Lady Michelle Obama and Oprah Winfrey. In February 2020, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. And oh, and sorry, February 2020, she was Congresswoman Ayanna Presley's guest as the State of the Union panelist at the Vinfen Moving Images Film Festival and the recipient of the Brinklow Humanitarian Microgrant. I never knew that. That's so awesome. She is also the member of many wonderful organizations. Mecca, it is my pleasure to have you here. Um, you know that I adore you and all the amazing work that you do. And, you know, I'm happy to have you here today to um, participate in our Pala Awareness Campaign. And I really do appreciate it. And um, if you don't mind by starting off and telling us a little bit of, about your story, I'd appreciate it. Well, thank you. And, and thank you for having me. You know, I love you too. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's really an interesting story to me now to tell it. As, first telling it as the mom of an angel baby and now telling it as a maternal health advocate. It, it, it's, it's really different because I can point out where the errors were made. Um, in August of 2010, August 26, 2010, um, my third at my 39 week checkup, I found out that my daughter, my daughter's heart had stopped beating. And it sent me spiraling. I don't like surprises. I have to say it again. I don't like surprises. And that had to have been one of the biggest surprises that I've ever encountered in my life. Um, we, my, my, my then 10 year old and five year old um, children were with me. And one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my life is tell them that their sister died and, and that they would be going, they would be going home with my aunt. We were not going to build a bear and all the other fun things that we had planned for that afternoon, but I would be staying at the hospital um, to deliver my daughter, not understanding and not really fully knowing what that would look like. Um, no one explains to you that even though the child has passed within utero that everything else is normal, it's still a baby, et cetera. So the, the fear, um, I can remember the immediate fear walking from my doctor's office over to labor and delivery with the unit social worker and feeling like my legs were both heavy and about to give out. Um, being in labor and delivery and hearing that clock, the tick and watching the clock um, moment to moment, praying that they were wrong 
in their diagnosis and in, in seeing what they saw on the ultrasound. Um, even after having her looking up, being in a teaching hospital and seeing a room full of residents, um, cry, you know, it, it, that's what brought me out of my everything. I was in my in my tunnel, you know, when you're ready to push the baby out, you're in your zone. And what brought me out of my zone and back to re the reality of the situation were the sobs in the room that were from the staff versus what should have been my child. Um, her 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 cries, which of course there were none. So um, having to advocate for myself after 20 minutes when a nurse came to me and said, oh, um, in these situations, people don't stay. When are you leaving? And for me to say to them, say to her, well, I'm not leaving. I just had, had a baby. And I'm staying for my entitled 48 hour period because I'd had a vaginal delivery. Um, but to go back for a moment, I remember begging for a C-section. And in hindsight, I mean, now that I, as a maternal health advocate, I'm grateful that they would not give it to me, but I can mm -hmm. remember being afraid to push her out, wondering if they, if they took her out right then and started chest compressions or what have you, um, if they could have saved her. And then having to beg for the right to stay at the hospital, remind people that I was still down in, because they put me in the overflow unit, no one was there. So having to ring the bell and wait sometimes an hour or more for someone to come. Um, even when um, at that time, my, my husband and I were separated and just remembering um, having to tell him, having to tell my, my mother-in-law. Um, and he was in Buffalo with his mom. So I um, had to pretty much do this alone. My auntie came and picked up my children and then came back to the hospital to be with me. And she was there with, um, she's the only other person besides myself from my family line who were, who saw Anaya and who held her and who sang to her and, and talked to her and um, loved on her, but not knowing, you know, I hadn't, you know, looking at everything and hearing people say, well, these things happen. And me thinking in 2010, okay, well, these things should not happen. Um, my oldest daughter was born with a congenital heart defect that was fixed, you know, it was right. repaired when she was very young, hearing these babies die and knowing that though that she was still there and healthy, um, but my healthy child was not and I really did not, just the way that she was treated, you know, and I know I'm jumping all over the place without telling a, a full story. No, um, it's okay. During the pregnancy, I, I noticed things. I noticed how I was feeling. I noticed how she was acting or not reacting to certain things that my, my previous two pregnancies would have, you know, my children, my older two, they were like popcorn in, in, in utero. And whenever I did certain things, they would react. And how <laughs> towards the end, she stopped reacting. And the fact that I went to the hospital, I, I, I had, you know, extra appointments because I was, I felt like something was wrong and they did nothing. They said it was in my head or it was because I was stressed over being separated from my husband or um, the fact that I've suffered from major depression um, since a child that had something to do with it. I was actually in a psych ward for two weeks 
towards the end of my pregnancy because they said that that's what what it was that was you know I, I could I needed a rest um and of course I did what they wanted because I was living in fear that someone was going to take my other two children away from me if I if I said no um so fast forward to my child's death and leading up to her death when she had the chronic hiccups um, towards it towards the end even that week I had my um, work baby shower that Monday and I can remember feeling like she was trying to claw her way out of my stomach and and immediately going to the hospital saying something's not right and of course they're noting this each time I go um, to that Thursday, just a few days later, after already going to the hospital saying, no, this, there's something wrong um, with them, you know, telling me, no, there's not anything wrong. She's fine to waiting and finding out my, um, we had an appointment for one time, my doctor, my OBGYN um, had an emergency. So we waited an extended time in the waiting room and she died while I was waiting to be seen. Now, she was healthy, but I was not. I later found this out. I had to hire an attorney to get my medical records because they wouldn't give them to me. They wouldn't give me her final autopsy results. No one seemingly wanted to meet with me to go over these results initially. Um, I opted not to go back to the gynecologist's office for my um, my six to eight week checkup and went to my PCP who arranged for me to be seen by Dr. Laura Riley and who was um, a high risk doctor at the hospital. Um, and I, went, I didn't know the day that I went for my six to eight week checkup that I was going to be meeting with Dr. Riley. And my doctor said to me, I have someone I want you to meet. She's a dear friend of mine. Please keep an open mind. Would you do this for me? She said, you need this. And I went and I sat down with her in her office. And she says to me, these things don't happen. These, this should never have happened. Your baby was healthy. Everything is showing that your baby was healthy. Um, what happened was my placenta failed. And there was no further explanation until um, I sought out legal. I, I didn't want to sue. I just wanted my medical records. Right. And that's what um, the attorney did for me. It took her 11 months to get my medical records. Um, and then it took me a year to open them after receiving them. And then it took me an additional year to find someone who would interpret them for me. And what they found by going over my pregnancy was that at, during the, at the very beginning of my second trimester, I developed, I was uh, trace amounts of protein in urine. So I developed protein urea and it was trace amounts. By the time I delivered, by the time I, by the time Anaya passed away, um, that urinalysis showed that I was spilling three plus amounts of protein. Well, what we understand now is that when you're, when healthy kidneys do not spill protein, healthy pregnancies do not have protein, spill protein. And it looks like I had preeclampsia because they noticed my blood pressure went up to what would have been considered normal for someone else, but I was on a beta blocker for PVCs. So what had been my a low blood pressure was still, was not my norm. My norm was a low blood pressure. And when it went up to the normal amount, they read it as normal, but that was high for me. Right. So um, they dropped the ball. And my healthy daughter um, 
succumb because of it. So realizing, you know, from that experience and learning the statistics surrounding Black maternal mortality and Black infant mortality and the numbers of stillbirths in the United States and all of that after the fact, I had to do something. You know, I, I could not let that lie. Um, so Anaya was born, she, she passed away in utero August 26, 2010. And she was born on August 27th, 2010, which was my 37th birthday. I was born on August 27th, 1973. And initially it seemed like a curse. And now I refer to that date, our birthday as my rebirth because I don't even remember who I was before losing Anaya. I don't remember, I know if, if I could, if someone could tell me this is where I would be, I'd be sitting here talking about this with you, Deb, you know, all these years later at age 48, you know, I, I, I would have said, yeah, right. You know, because this is not the trajectory. None of us want to be here. You know, but once the blinders come off, you have to do something. And this, as I said, this was the biggest surprise, um, one of the biggest surprises in my life. Um, but, uh, you know, I thought the worst that could happen was, um, you know, when my daughter, my oldest daughter was diagnosed with right. a congenital heart defect and required open heart surgery at two weeks. I never thought it could get any worse, especially a healthy, a healthy baby. You know, she was perfect in every way except for one. You know, she wasn't alive. And I'm grateful to her because she brought me into this world. She gave me you, Deb. She gave me so many people that I can now call friend, family, sister you know, brother, but to be a little selfish here, I'd love to have my 11 year old sixth grade daughter here with me. I really would. This is not a club that I would wish on anyone because the pain does subside. You learn how to smile, you learn how to walk, but that innocence is gone. And when the innocence, I did not mean to make you cry, but when that no, gone. You, 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 you know, but you, I just want to say, like you said something and it hit me to my core is, um, you know, you, you were reborn and like, I too, I don't, I'm like, a don't remember who I was. Right. I'm a fraction of that person who thought that I knew everything and it is like it takes the blinders off and you like you said and it, it rips open the curtains to all the awfulness in the world and it right. changes how you view everything and it's not for me I mean I didn't I I, I didn't I was so scared to live life personally for so long because I didn't yeah. trust anything I didn't drive for six months because I was so scared and you you said that and I'm sitting here and I'm like I'm not gonna cry she's talking <laughs> and I'm like oh it's it's over I'm like it's done there goes the five minute limit now we it's listen you you are such a force to be reckoned with you have accomplished so it's okay, Lee. It will be fine. Give mommy a few more minutes and then she, you can have her back. Um, I just want, you know, I wanted to take this opportunity. I do have two more questions for you and then I will let you okay. get to leave. I just, okay. I just need to say, like, there aren't enough people out there in the world like you. And I feel, I'm sorry that you've had to go through what you've had to, to get to where you are today. But if we're going to have people fighting for Anaya and for Autumn and for all the babies that were lost too, too soon, let it be you. Like I am, <laughs> I am proud to stand by you. You are just like a gift. And I, 
am just very grateful for you. I and I want to say one, one more thing about Anaya. Absolutely. And this is something that I, I've, I, I didn't know happened until it happened. Um, and it, when our babies are transferred from labor and delivery or from the NICU or from wherever into the morgue, and I know this is morbid, um, there are times when our little people go missing. My daughter was missing for several days. And I don't, you're, you find people that can guide you because I was, I, there was nothing. I, I had nothing. I couldn't do anything. You know, I still had two children at home who needed me. You know, they were still young, 10 and five. Right. Um, you know, Simone was starting full day kindergarten. I had to do school shopping while planning a funeral. I had to do, because school was starting a week later. Um, I had to, you know, get them in to see their pediatrician who had not heard and was expecting a baby, you know, th to, to, to see three children for their annual physical. And when I walked in, you know, everyone who expected her, you know, this pediatrician has been my pediatrician for 21 years. She'd had my, at that point, she'd been my pediatrician for 10 years. And when I walked in and told her during their appointment, because they were still young enough for me to take together, um, it knocked the air, it knocked the air right out. I, I saw the air being knocked right out from her. Um, but only also knowing that somewhere in that building, my they had misplaced my daughter's body during all of this, you know, having my job call me the Thursday. Now, we were going to go with the memorial service with or without her body. But my, my the mortician that I, the um, you know, the person that I had working with me from the mortuary was also, um, you know, like 20 years before she'd been in my shoes. So when you have someone who fully understands, she did everything for me. She went to the morgue the Friday night, the Friday before Anaya's memorial, which was that Saturday, and refused to leave until she had my daughter in hand. And that's the only reason why Anaya's body was at, because we were gonna go ahead with a, a, a empty cough and nobody would have known. But she said, no, this family deserves closure. And she stayed. And I thought until I started working with other families that this was just a fluke. No, this happens across the United States, probably all over the world where some families are left without closure, without that final, you know, knowing that their child's body has been cremated or buried because these institutions do not care for these babies the way that they should be cared for as babies. And that is sickening. The final acts are very important. You know, that's all we have, those moments. And even, and I was grateful. She, she, um, she said, you know, I, they, they knew I was serious. I wasn't leaving. Um, you know, she had a picture and, and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, our babies change because they're so little, they change quickly. Um, but, you know, just knowing that this happens all over the U.S. Is, is horrible. You know, and if anyone works in this industry and they see this video, I just want them to know that you would not leave a living baby alone. You would not leave a, ba a, a, a living baby to be lost intentionally. Not that it was an intentional. Right. But just, you, you, you see what I'm saying? Oh, I do. I do. 
just because the baby is absent of life does not mean that it's not a baby. And they deserve the same care, the same respect as um, a deceased adult. Absolutely. I mean, I've worked with families who, um, uh, I was proud of the last family that this happened to in New York and they went public. They they went to the hospital and they were like, we're not leaving until, and they met with people and they took it to the news and everything about their baby going missing. And all it was was pathology didn't sign the baby out when they took the baby to pathology. But they had no way of knowing that. And when the um, when the mortuary went to retrieve the baby, that's when they found out, same as with my um, mortuary, they went to get her a few days before when they received a call that she was ready. Um, and she wasn't there and they couldn't find her. And it took them days to find her. No one, I never asked where she was, but um, that's, that's a part of this, all of this, that was really crazy for me. You know? I'm, I'm sorry. I never knew that part of your story. Yeah. And I'm sorry for, for all that you have been through and have had to go through. I, I really am. And I, know that I'm running out a little bit more time, but we are going to continue having conversations because we are going to hopefully do some exciting things in the, in the future. Um, I do have, uh, I I have one question and we'll see as far as timing, if I can get to the next one, but if you could tell me, you know, how you, you, as you know, the point of, of us doing this, um, this month is to try to help others to guide them and give them ideas, um, how would you say that, you know, what are the many ways that you've been able to memorialize Anaya? Well, every year, every year um, for our birthday, it's close to back to school. I managed to give away backpacks um, filled with school supplies to children in memory of Anaya. Um, every year I am able to give away coats um, for children in memory of Anaya. Um, before people got upset over balloon releases, um, I released balloons, um, with names of babies written on them, um, with notes from parents, et cetera, in honor of her. Um, I have done, um, decorated my driveway, pulled out, and the kids and I would go outside and write baby names in chalk throughout the driveway, um, speaking about this so that one person, um, it could reach one person and then they would their baby would be saved because of certain things that I say in my talks. Um, you know, um, just being there for other parents as they go through this. Those are ways, um, creating quilt, teaching support staff. Um, We did a book drive one year. Tell us a little bit about about quilt. Um, Quilt was never supposed to be an organization. It was supposed to be a one-time event. And people became to, you know, started coming to me. Well, if you invite this person to join, then I can't join. If you invite that person to join, then I won't join. Um, Like I said, it was supposed to be one united organized, big, big, big event that we were gonna do, um, recreating Cherokee's um, walk, but similar to the AIDS quilts. And I wanted us to line the, the grass by the Lincoln Memorial, the same way that they did with the AIDS quilts. Okay. Because I think people, until you can see it, Hello. then you don't understand. Stop. Just wait. Um, so those are some of the things that I've done um, in memory of Anaya. Um, when people come to me saying that they need things for their children, just providing it, um, clothing, what have you. Each year for Christmas, I adopt a child who needs 
um, things and give her the Christmas, preferably the same age that Anaya would be. Right. And give her the Christmas that I would have given Anaya. Um, yeah. So That's we've so done a lot. You, my God, you really, um, Thank you from, from all the lost moms and to all the families that have benefited from all of your good work. I mean, and your generosity and your heart. I mean, thank you, honestly. Um, Anaya and your other three beautiful children here on earth are very, very lucky to have you. Um, I feel again so grateful to have you in my in my orbit you are one of my you're in my solar system you are <laughs> I, I look to you you're there um but uh you know i i appreciate you taking the time and being here let me know one more second and then she one more second yeah, one more one more and then we'll do this here go ask Nanti. Mm. And on that note, I think I will let you go, but thank you so, so much. And thank you, you know that I'll me. be in touch with questions after this about what I'm doing um, <laughs> and how to get this up and posted, but um, love you. Thank love you. you as well. All Take right. Care. I'll talk to you soon. All righty. Bye. Okay.